He says 14 billion years ago when the universe was born in a flash of light and energy, you and I were there. <laughs> Don't turn the channel. Spiritual explorer, cultural visionary, and cosmic thinker Andrew Cohen is here. He knows what it feels like to be intensely awake. Cohen travels the globe with mystics, religious leaders, philosophers, and people like Deepak Chopra who seek an enlightened life. What if we all believed when the Big Bang banged, when something came from nothing, we were there? Why are we here now? Next. It's good to be with you today and with internationally renowned spiritual investigator and enlightened revolutionary Andrew Cohen. He is passionately committed to helping us make a leap in consciousness in the modern world. It is a leap he calls evolutionary enlightenment, a new path to spiritual awakening in the 21st century. Cohen was born in New York. He is founder of the global nonprofit Enlighten Next. His first book was My Master is Myself. His new one with forward by Deepak Chopra is Evolutionary Enlightenment. In it, he says, there has never been a better time to be enlightened. Really? Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Never been a better time. Why now is a good time to be enlightened? Well, it was uh, Deepak, actually, after he read the book, is the one that said it, there's uh, never been a better time to be enlightened. And uh, I think it's because uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing in my book and with my, with my work is I'm, is I'm putting the, the traditional Eastern notion of enlightenment, which is the experience of consciousness beyond the ego or the small self, within the context of science's discovery of evolution, that we're all part of a 14 billion year developmental process that had a beginning in time uh, that made, you know, that's making this conversation possible. So if we believe 14 billion years ago we were there, not formed yet, but we were there. Yes. How does that change us today? Uh, well, how it changes us is, uh, is when we awaken to what's called an evolutionary worldview, our sense of self begins to expand because we, we begin to see the human experience we're having in the present moment in, in the context of cosmic history. We begin to see that we were actually born, right? This whole process was born when the universe was created. And so our, our sense of identity expa expands to begin to include the whole universe and the entire history of the development of the universe. And this, this, this gives us a very, uh, a very deep and profound sense of what it means to be a human being right now. Take me back to your uh, mystical beginnings, if I can call them that. Sure. Uh, uh, Andrew Cohen, 16 years old, yes. thinks he's going to be a musician, or yes. is a musician. Aspiring. I was aspiring to be a, a drummer, a jazz drummer, and I was, uh, I was born up, brought up in a secular Jewish family, so I had no religious education whatsoever. Um, and I was living in Rome, Italy with my, my mother, and we were sitting up late one night having a conversation, and for no particular reason, the doors of perception opened, and I had what's called an experience of cosmic consciousness. Uh, and w what happened was um, the, the, walls, the, the walls of the room we were sitting in metaphorically disappeared, and I, uh, I, I experienced an expansion of consciousness. I experienced uh, a no boundaries, a sense of beginninglessness and endlessness. This beginninglessness and endlessness uh, uh, had a presence, had a, a consciousness, had a sense of intelligence, and its nature was the experience of a kind of love that was so overwhelming, it, it was physically devastating. I felt if it does, this does not stop, I feel I'm going to be crushed, I might die. So, you didn't die. No, well, I didn't die, but what happened uh, in that moment is I realized that there is, there is more to life and more to reality mm. than I had previously understood, and that, there, uh, and that uh, at, at the deep, deepest depths, of our, of our consciousness is a potential to experience the, what's called the infinite. Okay, and have you figured out why some people are in constant search of the infinite of the answers and others, eh, not interested? Well, I, th I think that, you know, some people are more thoughtful and, and, and sensitive and, and uh, more, more in touch with the existential realities of life mm -hmm. than other people. What liberates the human spirit? I, well, I believe what liberates us is the uh, awakening to and the discovery of a deep and profound sense of, of meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. 
I'm with you there. Yeah. Uh, and it, but it's brave to be a spiritual pioneer, as you know, uh, a change agent of sorts. Not a guru necessarily, but somebody who says, gee, uh, there's a term called evolutionary enlightenment. It is a new path to spiritual awakening. And uh, if you're curious, you should read about it and hop on. Well, well, what, what people like me do is we try and compel people uh, to, to question things, to think more deeply, to, to ask the big questions. And the, the, the big questions have always been and will always be, who am I and why am I here? Mm -hmm. what, why does the universe exist? What caused something to come from nothing? Right. And I gather from reading your book, something is coming from nothing every second. Indeed. So how do we understand that primordial moment when something came from nothing 14 bil billion years ago? Well, it's a great... If we're not a theoretical physicist. Right. Well, the, well the, a physicist looks... A, a physicist and a scientist looks at reality from the outside, and they want to understand how the universe was created. Uh, a philosopher and a mystic wants to know why. Mm -hmm. And so a philosopher and a mystic looks, looks at, tries to look at the process from the inside out. And if you do that, look at the world from the inside out and outside in, but inside out, mm. where do you start? Well, we start, we start within our very own experience. If we're going to look at reality from the inside out, we have to st stop looking outside of ourselves only and begin to learn how to mm -hmm. peer within and penetrate the depths of our own interiors. Well, when I think about life often, it's about my own life. And I'm sure when you think about life, it's about your life. It's not well, about everybody else's well, life. Not, well, not only, not only, because when we, when we begin to look uh, very deep inside ourselves, we begin mm -hmm. to become aware of the fact that who we are and what we are and how we are it has been produced by and is part of a process that had a beginning in time 14 billion years ago. Your body, your mind, your personality, and your experience of consciousness is part of a creative process, is part of the evolutionary process, just like mine is. So from the perspective of the evolutionary process as a whole, which is a singular event, mm -hmm. your experience and my, my experience is part of one event. And when we know that, it really does expand our sense of self and, and breaks the, these ego boundaries that m many of us live in where we, we, we feel we're living in a very isolated, separate interior world. Yes, and uh, there are others. Everybody is an other, rather, rather than part of us. I know that sounds a bit esoteric. Well, no. Well, there are other people in the world, but, mm -hmm. but, but we begin to identify not only with other people, we begin to identify with all of humanity, all of life. And finally, we begin to identify with the evolutionary process as a whole, with the entire universe, with the, with the process that's in progress right now. And eventually, if it works, we become intensely awake, as you are. And what does that mean? How do you feel? when you are intensely awake? Uh, uh, we, one feels very much in, in touch with realities. You know, often sensitive people are aware of the fact that, they, that there's, there's more to know and there's more to be in touch with, there's more to feel, there's more to see, there's more to know, there's more to understand. And so the, 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 the reversal is, is a sense of actually being deeply in touch with what it means to be alive, feeling it, knowing it, thinking it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and it's also the experience of being more deeply engaged with life. And as, you know, many cynics would say, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, <laughs> Myrtle. It's just a mess. You know, we've got huge uh, uh, climate change or some climate change, some agree, some don't. Many issues in the world. We look at what's happening in uh, Gaza today in Israel. Yeah. In the Middle East. Well, I think that we are facing a lot of problems and you just, you met, you just mentioned, you know, a number of them. But I think what many of us miss is that in spite of these enormous problems and challenges that we're facing, uh, the, the world is a, is a better and more humane place than it's ever been. There's been enormous progress uh, over the last 400 years of human history, and um, more people are living uh, with a, high, a level of, of justice and dignity and wealth and freedom uh, than, than ever, ever in human history. Mm -hmm. And if you're not? And if you're not, and if you're not, we need to do everything we can to make sure that, 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 that sooner rather than later you are. Mm -hmm. And where do you start? When you give a workshop and mm. talk to business leaders or uh, mystics or religious people from all religions, where do you start to become enlightened, evolutionary-ly, yeah. <laughs> something like that, well, enlightened? 
Well, well, I start with making a very bold statement, and I say that all the most renowned mystics from all the great world's w wisdom traditions, all the great religions, have told us that the ultimate nature of reality is that there's only one and not two. And there's universal agreement from all the religions and all the wisdom traditions that the ultimate truth about the nature of reality is that there is only one and not two. And so then I ask people, what does that mean? And so I interpret the, the, this mystical declaration that the ultimate truth is that there's only one, uh, pointing everybody to the fact that, that the experience that we're having now, our experience of being embodied, having an experience of, of consciousness, our emotional and psychological experience, has, is all part of an evolutionary unfolding that had a beginning in time 14 billion years ago. And remember, when the universe was created in the first instant, all the matter in the universe could fit on the head of a pin. Mm -hmm. And look what it has become and is becoming. And uh, the, great, uh, um, the, uh, the great cosmologist, a friend of mine, uh, Brian Swim, said, if you want to really get what's going on with evolution, he said, you just take hydrogen gas, leave it alone, and after 14 billion years, you have giraffes, butterflies, and Shakespeare. <laughs> so th there's something extraordinary happening mm. here in this creative universe. And what I'm trying to point people to is the creativity that is giving rise to this process is, is, is also making it possible for us to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And when we uh, begin to experience that creativity, we begin to experience a kind of, a kind of freedom, a kind of spiritual freedom and, and exhilaration that, uh, that, that changes everything. The possible human. Uh, we become Indeed. more creative, uh, innovative. Turned on by life, inspired awake. And would you go as far to say that I am God, you are God, we are all God? Well, before I would make a statement like that, I wanted to, I wanted to find what we mean when we use that word, because it's a very charged word, mm -hmm. and it means all kinds of different things for different people. But w what I would refer to as, uh, you know, what I feel comfortable, re re you know, referring to as that, is that the, I, 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 I say there's an absolute God-like principle, which I would call the energy and intelligence that created the universe and is creating the universe right now. It's the creative principle in the mm -hmm. cosmos, that which is compelling the universe to exist, that which is, as I keep saying, making it possible for us to have this conversation right now. Sure. God is evolving as we evolve, really. Well, that's Would that a, be true? Well, I believe that, but that's a very revolutionary concept. Yes, it is. Because, because the traditional, the traditional uh, mythic or religious notion of, of God is that this, there is a divine being that, it, mm -hmm. that somehow abides beyond the universe that is static and unchanging. But when we recognize that the entire creative process is the expression of what is traditionally be called God or spirit, we realize that the creative process as a whole is in a developmental process that's in progress, that's giving rise to higher and higher levels of complexity. And no matter how far you have come, there will always be further to go. And we know how to go there if we just get it. Well, but that, that's also a revolutionary idea because the great traditions, you know, always told us that there's, 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 an, you know, there's an end of the world, there's mm -hmm. going to be an ap apocalyptic ending, or, or, or there's, there, there's, we can come to the end of spiritual development in the East, they call it becoming fully enlightened. Right. But, uh, but when we embrace an evolutionary worldview, we realize we're part, of a, we're part of a process of infinite creativity and infinite becoming. There is no end to development. Okay, and there's not someone out there who knows way more than you do. They might intellectually, uh, they might uh, be better at math or physics, but at our essence, our, what, what you call the authentic self, yes. we're all the same. Or is that not true? Well, we, we all have the potential to be, to be liberated, inspired, very creative individuals if we can just get, you know, get, get over these obstacles that are in our way, a lot of this ne you know, negative, thinking, uh, uh, negative thinking and negative feelings about ourselves. And we can awaken to this and experience directly this primordial creativity that gave rise to the universe mm. and giving, is giving rise to it right mm. now. We, we can experience a, 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 a freedom, a creative freedom and a spiritual freedom that makes all things possible. Okay. We'll return with spiritual teacher and tracker Andrew Cohen, author of Evolutionary Enlightenment, A New Path to Spiritual Awakening.